Hello everyone, Imtiaz here from JobBuddyProgrammer.com where we teach thousands of students how to code and get jobs in software development. I want to talk about job postings today and we're going to talk about good job postings versus bad job postings. Sometimes uh, entry level jobs require two years of experience and you might think, what is, what is that all about? I've, I've finished my curriculum, I've learned software development to some degree, I'm, I'm an entry level person, but where do I get these two years of experience? So I'm gonna talk about a couple of these things. By the way, if you like this type of content, make sure to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, click the notification icon to stay up to date. Uh, so, job postings. Well, first let's talk about good job postings versus bad job postings. If you go to any job posting website, you'll see some job postings that are actually good, meaning they have a proper uh, guideline as to what the requirements are, what a candidate should know, what will the candidate be doing at that given position, the, the list of uh, skills that they need to have to successfully be able to complete that job. And then you have bad job postings where it has every single technology that you can think of listed in that job posting. And it doesn't tell much about what the role is. It might just have a few buzzwords about the role, but then there's, all, there's a huge list of all these things that the candidate might need to learn and it's still an entry level position. And you might look at that and get intimidated. So I wanna demystify this particular topic as well as a couple more things uh, and you, what your approach should be to apply when you don't have any experience and you wanna get your foot in the door. So let's talk about how a good job posting makes its way onto a website versus a bad one. What happens in the background? That's important information for you to consider when you're applying to these jobs. That perspective is important. So I'm gonna give you that perspective right now. A good job posting is something that's fresh. It's been written by a hiring manager uh, that you will be working for. And that hiring manager organizes it, uh, gives as much detail as poss uh, possible about the role, and then hands that over to the recruiter and the recruiter puts, puts it onto their career section of their website or a job posting website. That's a good job posting. A bad one is a, uh, a you know some hiring manager needs to hire a couple of coders for a given position that they need filled in the company. So they uh, give a call to the recruiter uh, in the HR department and say, hey, could you, uh, could you just use that? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit busy right now. Uh, I couldn't come up with a job posting right now, but you know what? The job posting that we posted a couple weeks ago uh, you can use that one. It has most of the things that we need. And so just use that, put it up there. We have another position open. And so what the recruiter does is it, he take, they, they take that job posting that, they, that was for another job and they put it for this one. And then when it's on the job posting website, the hiring manager later, when he has time, he confirms with the recruiter and says, hey, uh, by the way, did you make sure that it has uh, uh, Elasticsearch or it has SOAP web services listed on there? Because those are really important uh, subjects that I want covered and the hiring and the HR uh, person uh, says, okay, I'll get back to you. Let me make sure that's there. So let's say if, if it's not, they just tag it on there and say must have. And they kind of piecemeal these different uh, technologies together just to just keep uh, dumping them onto the job post. And that's where you come up with this huge list of, uh, of things that sometimes are unrelated to the position that you're going to be applying for. And then it gets worse because that position that they posted, let's say it gets filled, later the hiring manager needs another position filled, they call the recruiter and says, hey, just reuse that one, but make these changes in that and just upload it onto the career section. And so most of the posting is being done by these recruiters or these hiring, man not the hiring manager, the HR department, the, the recruiters. And so obviously they don't know much about coding. That's not their uh, that's not their forte. So they're going to be copy pasting and just kind of piecemealing things together to make these postings. And that's a bad job posting. So what I want you to know is if, if you're a, let's say an entry level person that has developed, you know, a couple of applications, you learn the basics of uh, software development and you got a couple of texts under your belt, go ahead and apply to entry level positions. Even if it says two years of experience, it doesn't matter. Apply, even if you don't have that experience. Uh, some are, will say zero to two, experience, two years of experience and it'll still have that huge list of things that you might need to know. Don't worry about it. Still apply because that job posting might just not be perfect. Okay, Keep that in mind. It's, and oftentimes it's not perfect. Now there are two kinds of candidates that may apply to a given job and you want to be one kind that I, I'm going to explain to you in just a moment. But there's that kind of that looks at a job posting and sees, oh my God, there's all these technologies and it, it requires two plus years of experience. Even though it's an entry level job, I'm not ready. There's no way I'm, I can't apply to this. All right, that's, that, that's one level, one kind of candidate. And the other kind of candidate is 
okay, this job posting, uh, you know, there's a lot of things, that, but I know a couple of these. And this is an entry level position. They'll probably ask me about data structures, algorithms. They'll talk about databases and I'll, I'll try to uh, do well on the interview, but I'm still going to go ahead and apply. And, and I may have a portfolio that I've been working on. I've, I've built a couple of applications. I've got a GitHub profile. I've got all this code and experience that I can show for. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and apply. Even though the previous candidate may have, uh, you know, maybe more knowledgeable about the subject matter, but because of their, you know, shyness or whatever, or their fear, they might not apply. So you wanna be the more aggressive candidate, the one that's a go-getter. And that's what's required. The first candidate might think I'm not qualified. The second candidate might think, how can I hack myself into this position? Okay, I don't have two years of real world experience, but I've got, I've built some really cool stuff here. And so, okay, you know what? Let me just create a, a profile on Upwork and start getting jobs there and start working on, uh, on more things to show for. Uh, go on a freelance website, create a profile there. I am a self-employed person, you know, even though I'm not making any money, but hey, I'm a developer. I, I code. That's what I do all day. So yeah, I deserve for this. I deserve to apply to this position because let me tell you the tech space, there are so many different areas and so much going on uh, in the tech space. I'll, sh I'll talk about, for example, the consulting uh, area within tech. There's a lot of scamming that happens in consulting. And I don't think I've talked about this before, but let me just shed some light so that you can understand uh, that you're not a bad person for applying for a two-year role, uh, two-year experience uh, role, even though you have one year's of experience. For example, I've seen consulting companies, I've seen clients or you know large tech camp companies that need uh, a position filled, so they hire a consulting company to source the uh, candidate for them and that consulting company might not have that resource available readily so what they will do is they'll hire a smaller consulting company and say hey could you find us a candidate that matches this profile and the small company obviously they're aggressive and they're they're going to hack their way into this and they're like okay let me see uh we don't have a candidate right now but you know what we'll get you that we'll get you that guy in a couple weeks and what they're going to quickly start doing is searching and uh either within their own team or searching for someone that they can train quickly, that looks sharp or sounds sharp. <laughs> and so they're gonna start teaching him this and they're gonna fire hose him with the knowledge just to pass that interview or at least make it through uh, the first week or so uh, until he kind of figures out what's going on in the company and they, they, they're gonna try to place him. And that happens a lot. I remember a time where I interviewed this candidate over Skype and he was in a different state at that time. And uh, uh, you know, I, it was, I guess my negligence of not noticing that what he was saying, uh, his lips, obviously this, the video quality wasn't great and I'm sure the consulting company that we hired set it up in such a way, but basically we could see his lips moving uh, and we can hear him answer the questions correctly. The interview questions that I was giving him, uh, he was answering them correctly, but I didn't really notice that his lips were just, you know, he was just going blah, 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 blah. Whereas somebody else, some other guy from the consulting company was actually answering his questions for him. That happens in this industry. That's crazy, but it happens. And so this guy comes uh, a couple weeks later for the position and uh, it's the same guy. Sometimes you might not even see the same guy. Sometimes they, the consultant company might just send uh, some other person. <laughs> but anyway, that guy appeared and uh, I engaged in a dialogue with him and I started noticing, I'm like, wait a minute. This guy does not sound like the guy that was on that call. So somebody was actually speaking on his behalf. He was just moving his lips. I realized that and I got the guy out of there. And I've seen this happen uh, even at, at one of my first early uh, jobs. Uh, there was this uh, a, a young girl that the, team, that the team hired and she absolutely just bombed the first day. Like she, you know, she didn't even know how to like almost, you know, turn on the computer. Um, you know, I, I'm exaggerating here, but it was that bad. Okay, so we obviously had to let her go, but this happens in the tech space. So if you're in a position where you've been coding for a couple, for a year and you have a portfolio to show for, and you're wondering whether you should apply for this two-year position, damn right you should apply. Go ahead and apply. Be that go-getter you deserve to if you have a portfolio to show for. So uh, hopefully this was helpful. If you liked what I had to say, again, make sure to like this video, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, uh, and click the notification icon to stay up to date and I'll see you in another, another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.